So we're going to do this piece here on uh, how to call PowerShell from your app. Right. All right. So here we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio 2008. <coughs> and all I need to do to create a new application that calls PowerShell is create a new project. I'm going to create a simple console application to yeah. start out with. <coughs> My quick PowerShell app. And there's one thing that is somewhat annoying about uh, writing C-sharp applications that call PowerShell, and that is that the depending on whether you downloaded PowerShell from the Windows SDK or you downloaded PowerShell, uh, or you had PowerShell in the box as part of an installation, you might be referencing the wrong assembly. So the way I tend to do this um, is I actually go and I edit the file and I add the individual assembly reference to it. Um, there, you right click, you open it in Explorer, you find out that it's gone all the way over to this monitor over here. Unfortunately, this is Visual Studio's uh, bug, not ours. They have a list of assemblies and we are not on it. Um, yeah. But you just put system.management.automation, which is PowerShell's assembly, in here. Okay. This will find whatever version of PowerShell was registered in the GAC, which is whatever version of PowerShell you have installed. So if you're on Windows 7, this will reference V2 just fine, whether or not you have the Windows SDK installed. Or, or if it's version 1, it'll do the version 1. That's we right. don't care in our app. Exactly. Well, actually, um, the developer story has gotten significantly better in version 2. So everything that I'm going to show you is version 2 APIs. Okay. And quite frankly, I really consider version 2 AP, or developer API story to be a great reason to adopt it. Okay. But now that we've got that reference edit, we're going to go back into our program, and all we do is we add a couple of quick using statements using system.management.automation, and I'm going to add another one using system.management.automation run spaces. I actually only need one for the hello world sample, but run spaces is probably going to need to be there eventually. So to call PowerShell, I'm just going to go ahead and say PowerShell.create and then I'm going to add a script, get process. And then I'm going to go ahead and invoke the script. And in fact, I know I want only strings. Actually, I'm going to want to pipe this to a command called outstring. So I'm going to add another command, outstring. Outstring gives me the same look and feel as the PowerShell console. And then I'm going to go ahead and invoke this, and I'm going to say that I want a string back. So one long line. I'll say for each string, stir in my PowerShell call. Console right line. Stir. So we're up okay, to cool. what? Uh, 20 lines, including using statements. Okay. Let's go ahead and save it and run it. And forget to do Control F5 so it goes away really quickly. And there we go. We actually have pretty close to the same view that we would have from the PowerShell console doing get process. Okay. And just a few lines of code.